G'day and welcome to New Friends. I'm Execute. I'm joined by Algrid and Badges. Salutation, citizen. So this uh, week during the live stream, uh, which Algrid was not there for, and which many of you dropped by to let me know what I had done with him, he's actually, he's totally fine. Yeah. And, and as I was saying earlier, that, 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 that's right. I, I've managed to escape those nasty workers. That, that boy Badges, you know, he, he you got to watch him. <laughs> um. <laughs> So with that, uh, we thought we'd uh, try it out and see. Um, we got recommended to try out um, a comparison between the Perseus and Polaris. We thought mm. we'd try it out. And if uh, this works out, we might have a new series where we do comparisons between ships. But, but we'll give it a go. So with that, um, just remember to like, subscribe, and uh, please ring the notification bell uh, to get our latest videos if you like this type of content. All right. All right. With that, Badges, do you want to kick us off with um, the Perseus, please? Absolutely. It, yeah, it's going to be no surprise that I jump on the Perseus mine. Um, and, and basically, a little bit about the origins of this ship, because it's it's going to matter to the, the comparison. Um, the Perseus was actually a very aging gunship that was being stopped and had been stopped in production. So the only ones left in the UE Navy were old gunboats. So when Admiral Bishop uh, launched the attack against the Vandal and the Oberon system to reclaim it, he actually took um, one called the Achilles with him, um, and it proved to be more than a match for the Vandal. Um, although it was itself damaged beyond repair, it managed to take out two Vandal destroyers pretty much single-handedly. Um, and at which point, um, Admirable Bishop, played by Gary Oldman, demands that they are returned to production, and that there's um, also a civilian version, which is the ones that you and I can get our hands on, uh, put back into practice. But the big thing about these ships is uh, that they have two turrets, um, both twin-sized seven. So those cannons that hit extremely hard off of the um, Ares Ion, uh, this thing's basically carrying four of them in a ballistic version. Uh, so it hits exceptionally hard. Uh, its weakness appears to be and, uh, uh, swarms of fighters, um, and that's where we find ourselves today with the Perseus putting batting yeah. production um, and us being able to get our hands on them. All right. Uh, uh, and just to put the, the dates into into a bit of context there for you, um, first introduced um, in the 2520s. So we look talking 400 years odd, odd ago. Uh, generally to fight in the Xeon Human Cold War, uh, based on the Perry line. Also featured in the Tavaran War. In the 2860s, the UEN was saying, we don't need this anymore, and RSI, because there was such a lack of interest, actually took it out of production. 29, uh, 2946 was when Admiral Bishop took his fleet into Oberon after the attack on Vega, uh, faced off against the, uh, the Vandul in the Oberon system in Operation Mandrake, took the Achilles and the rest is history, and in 2950 was when we saw the new Perseus released at the Intergalactic Aerospace Expo. So four years after Operation Mandrake. So you've got a, a, a development process going on there. Um, All right. The do second you, ship we're looking at. Do you want to tell us about the Polaris? Good. Yep. So the second ship we're looking at is the Polaris. Um, and the Polaris comes about as a result of the attack on Vega in, I think, 29, ooh, 2942. Um, ish. Um, and as a result of that attack, there's a design process goes forward where the Navy says, hey, we need a new, we need a new ship to fill this gap. The Polaris is, is seen as that ship to fill the role. And in the design process, RSI not only consult with the Navy to say, what do you need in the fleet, but they also go to the Bremen Defence Force, a local militia, and say, what does your militia need in its fleet. And as a result of the mishmashing between the two, we get the uh, Polaris. Now, one of the things that I find unique with the Polaris, one of the things I, in the, the recent Law Citizen podcast that Paul raised is the shape of a Polaris being kind of more angular and triangular. And he postulates that the design or shape of a Polaris uh, comes out of the X-12 discovery, which was a Vandal, large Vandal ship we found, of humanity found, and then was able to rip apart and back engineer stuff and find out their weaknesses uh, and other things. And 
And so you, you look at the ship and then it, you've got this angled shape which deflect other things, you know, deflect shots and other things. But for me, that made sense because when the Polaris came out, I was, and, and they, they had their, their law designer, you know, the, the law team had the RSI designer saying, when you build a big ship, you can't build it like small. And I'm thinking, why does RSI need to work out how to build a big ship? They build the blasted Bengal. <laughs> so for me, it was what's going on that they've got to work out how to design the ship. And for me, Paul's postulation that it comes out of, part of the design comes out of X-12 vandal ship breakdown kind of means that could have a bit of some legs to stand on as well. So, Is there anything you'd like to add about the Polaris badges? Um, no, 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 not massively. Um, I, I think what's really interesting is that if you go back to the brochure, and the brochure is aging now and is not accurate in a number of ways, but it does mention specifically that it's actually built with those militias that um, Algrid mentioned in mind. So militias, private security firms, it actually seems to be aimed at that in terms of the civilian or the private security market, mm. as well as the UEE Navy for their roles. Mm. Well, um, just to that note, then, what you said about um, since it was released, so obviously the Polaris has increased in size because the hangars were, mm -hmm. were increased in size. Um, also, both of them are not in production at the moment, so they could ch things could obviously change as well in regards to both of them, as I think there will. Um, yep. So this is a specter of speculation as well. Mm, mm -hmm. For sure. Um, so, uh, one of the things that I do want to point out is if, um, if you look at the, it really is a juxtaposition between old and new when it comes to these ships. They're both from the same manufacturer, um, as you both kind of said. Um, if you look at the Polaris, you've got this new angled thing that we, the only other ship that I can really think of at all that even remotely comes close to that triangle look that Alga was talking about is the Scorpius, and I don't think it's the, quite the same, but it's the only one. So I'm hoping down the line, um, actually, Alga, now I think about the Zeus. It's probably mm. the only other one I can think of. Um, <laughs> the earliest, the earliest RSI ship. <laughs> yeah. So hopefully we do get to see a bit more triangle stuff, uh, not just the you know the head of the the constellation type look. Um, and and funnily enough, the Perseus it's, it's itself is also a little bit arrowheadish arrow as well, so to speak. So or a triangle. So they do have mm -hmm. a little bit of similarities and uh, in differences. Mm. Um, you got the engines at the back of the Polaris are very similar to a Constellation engine, where the engines on the back of the Perseus are a lot more like a Bengal. So they they all have different strengths and weaknesses and. Um, uh, drawn strengths of other RSI craft, which I find is really, really interesting. And as I said at the beginning, it's just a real interesting juxtaposition between old and new. Um, and, mm -hmm. and I like them both for different reasons. Um, they do probably sit closer than any two RSI vehicles in the entire game, uh, but they do do different roles. And, and, and we'll kind of go mm -hmm. into that a little bit later uh, when we compare them a bit further. But... Um, do one of you have the statistics for me on? So, so if I can get one of you to do the statistics, the of the matrix of life. Yeah, so I'll get someone to do the the size and the width and that type of thing, and then I'm going to get someone to do the components for me. So um, mm. do, badges, I'll let you go first. You pick which one you'd like to do um, if you've got them in front of you, and uh, take it away. Sure. So yeah, so just just looking size wise um, between the two. Um, you know, right off the bat, the Polaris is classed as a capital or size is capital, um, whereas the process is large. So you would expect the process to be smaller and smaller it is. Um, you have the Polaris being 155 metres long to the process is 100, 82 metres wide to the process is 50, and then 35 metres high to the process is 21. Sorry, X, you were going to say? I was just going to say, like, what, something I think is really glaring obvious as we compare these that kind of just came to me. If you take the hangar out of the Polaris, right, and you kind of mm -hmm. rejig the ships, I do think they're kind of similar after that. If you, mm. if, I don't know, what, what, what's your thoughts yeah. on that? It, like, it's just one seems to have a hangar and it makes it bigger. Um, obviously, they're different armaments and that, but I'm saying, like, if you you got a visual, it, and yes, you do have to go a bit speculative yeah. there but if you take it out they do seem kind of similar to me yes um the polaris what's immediately clear is the polaris makes a lot better use of its internal space hmm. um and and that i think in this is intentional that's not a design whoopsie that's you know for the 
Um, Pass just to have that arrowhead shape. You've got areas all down its flanks that are just not wide enough to have a human in it. Mm -hmm. So that's naturally dead space. And, you know, on ships, one of those spaces that is notoriously dead space is the bow. Because it's just not wide enough to have anything useful in it. Sorry, what was that? The... Where it... What'd you say? The that? bow. The, bell. the, the front. Oh. The, the bow. The, the front the... point of it. I thought you said the bell. I'm like picturing someone like <laughs> in a church bell. I was like, what the hell's going someone, on? Someone, someone sat inside the yeah. church bell. Yeah. yeah. Um, whereas the Polaris, of course, its bow is its bridge. Yeah. So it makes mm. much better use of that space. And you can see that with the SCU as well. So mm. the Polaris can carry 216 SCU of cargo. The Perseus only 50. Yeah. So yeah. there's definitely a, a difference but there. That also puts the but I can... the um, Perseus in a rarer situation because it's driven from the back, like more of the other bigger capital ships, where the Perseus is more akin to um, mm -hmm. like the Constellation or the Aurora. Or well, let's be honest, most fighters in this game are driven from the back. Oh, sorry, the front, not the mm -hmm. not the back. Mm -hmm. oh, sorry, Agri, you want to say? Yes. And I was going to say when you look at the, when just look at that top down view of them, if you do chop off that back section where the hangar is on the Polaris, mm -hmm. they do then. Become yeah. very much the same mm -hmm. size ship, don't they? Yeah, um, that's that's kind of what, something I hadn't. Kind of what it gave it to me when I was flicking the angle around. I kind of yeah, that if you chop, yeah. yeah, that's literally what I did. So you're on the same page as I was. Yeah. yeah. So the so I suppose the question is in terms of like the role certainly that they've been as they were initially put out. Mm. To, as I understood it, was the Polaris was certainly built as being this longer range, longer range ship, and yet. Mm. For me, the question comes back, but it's a local defence. It's built for the needs of local defence forces. What does the Bremen Defence Force need of an inter-system ship? Mm. What does, um, you know, what, what does any system need? Mm. Any local, you know, what does, what does Crusader Industries um, blackjack security need with an intergalactic or inter-system frigate? Mm. I, that, or Corvette, it doesn't make sense I've, always, I've often thought about um, ships that have hangars right, and I almost think that this is the ship that turns up and supports the stuff that's already there mm. when it comes to a ship like this so if you think about how so the Polaris might come from the centre of the system out to the fringes and there's already fighters there that join with it and those fighters that join with it are what cycle through it and are supported by it. So rather than, mm -hmm. you know, you almost have like um, fighters on every moon or planet or whatever, and this just heads out to where the trouble is and is the backup um, because it can travel really far distances, as, it, as you've alluded to, mm -hmm. our grid, but fighters can't. So it's limited then to only taking one fighter with it, which I just think is kind of really weird because one of the strengths of ships with hangars is the ability to cycle stuff through and, and, and support multiple fighters. And we, we've talked about that a lot. Even when we talked about the Odyssey, we did the same thing. And it's just like, well, the problem with the Odyssey, though, is where does it get those other ships out there? And mm -hmm. that, that can't do that because it is out on the fringes. But if the Polaris is going to uh, multiple different mm -hmm. locations, they should already be there. Um, so that, that is a big benefit of this ship over, say, something like another ship with a hangar, obviously being the Polaris. Yeah. And as a local ship, you, you'd you'd be looking at it in terms of you know it's just say you know got now now old man Hurston I'm sure would like a couple of these in the in the Hurston Defence Fleet, mm -hmm. um, so you know you got those and it's there's trouble in in one of the moons and it goes there to support the fighters and then you know so that type of system yeah. travel as opposed to going into Pyro or yeah. kind of things because Crusader in Crusaders um. Um, uh, security forces don't need to be going into Pyro. Mm. If yeah. they need to go into Pyro, it's the UEN that's going in there and fighting. Their, their, their forces are, are not going to well, be going out of system. What you're seeing here, that the bit that doesn't make sense to you, I think, is is you're seeing crossover of two things here. Um, mm. First off is the range is obviously built for the UEE side of their design spec. So that's not being built for the militias. That's for the UEE side of the contract. Um, the other thing that the militias may want to adopt or not at, the, at their peril is um, there's a military concept of something called defense in depth. So you can see the complete opposite of this during World War II. The French built this mm. 
incredibly heavily fortified area of their border between themselves, Germany, um, something called the Maginot Line. Um, and the, and, but they put everything, everything of their doctrine, their entire philosophy was fighting through the Maginot Line. So the Germans just went around it. Yeah. Because when you, well, you put everything of, into one... My, my mum was a history sorry, teacher, and my mum told mm -hmm. me that a lot of the guns were fixed in placements that could only shoot in that direction. So when they walked yep. around, they couldn't even just like pick up the guns and turn them back in to shoot back That's in right. the woods. So they were stuffed. And basically, they'd wasted all their money. Yeah, exactly. But on the other side, the French also had more tanks and more heavier tanks than the Germans did mm -hmm. in World War II. The difference was a doctrinal approach to how they used the tanks. The Germans massed yes. all their tanks together in fast, fast, unit, fast moving units. Mm -hmm. So they'd punch through and keep going. The French penny parceled their tanks out with their infantry. So they, they saw their tanks as infantry support vehicles, it, not as the main weapon. Yeah, it, and, in exactly the way they'd been used in World War One as, as a means of, of yeah. creating a breakthrough rather than a, a standalone tactical unit. And I think that's where the Polaris comes in, is that your defence for your system may not necessarily be just, I want to prevent them entering our atmosphere. It may it may be I don't want them developing bases on our moons. Well, what's a yep. really good way of stopping a base being built is a strength is a size ten missile being dumb fired into the centre of it. Um, so you've got all these this ability, and I think that comes on to the last comparison you can make between the two under the specifications is the Perseus is minimum and maximum crew. That's the same number. Yeah. Mm. Whereas you look at something like the Polaris, it's clearly built to deal with a wider range of situations. And it actually mentions that, I think, in the, the brochure. You've got a brig, you've got an armory, you've got a medical bay, you've got the hangar, um, yeah. and all of those sorts of things al allow it to do so much more than just, um, you know, the Hulk smash that the Parasus does. Not so that I'm trying to rain on the Hulk smash, but... So yeah, I, 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 I want to kind of, I'll put this to both of you, but it is mainly at Badgers because he's a military guy, but you feel free to uh, chime in our grid. Mm -hmm. But when I look at the Polaris, I think it's more offensive. And I think, uh, and when I say offensive, I think it's like offensive support, which is a really weird combo. Um, but I think the, the Perseus is way more defensive because of the armor um, and stuff like that. So I almost think in a way the, uh, the Polaris will be at the back line and it'll come in and strike almost like a because well, like like other torpedo bombers like it will it'll it'll either come in and do a first strike or it'll wait mm -hmm. as an opportunist after the like some damage has probably been done by some of the fighters and then go in and finish something off where um almost more like a brawler the Perseus can just go in and rub and tumble because it's got the it's got the guns where um you. Like, like, again, if you were to put these off against each other in a fight, the Polaris is going to win because it's got the torpedoes. It's just that simple. Like, mm -hmm. But they've got to spend the money. Like, they're really expensive to actually do that. But... Yes. Yeah, I don't know. You, I know I've said a lot yeah. there, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, no, I, absolutely. And, it, you know, you're, you're leading quite nicely into, the, 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 the like, the class names of the ships as well. Mm. Um, so the Polaris is a Corvette. The Parsis is a frigate, according mm -hmm. to the ship matrix. According yeah. to the matrix of lies. Yes. Um, now, that doesn't make sense, because the Idris is also a frigate. Yeah. Um, now, these are all drawing very heavily from naval class types, right? And like, uh, there's a whole video on that sort of stuff, so mm -hmm. please go watch if you'd like. Um, but in effect, the Corvette is the smallest vessel that can be called a warship. Yep. Um, up from that, you then go to frigate, you then you, you then go to destroyer. You then go to cruiser, battle cruiser, and there are gradients. So you'll get light cruisers, armored cruisers, heavy cruisers, but that's by and large what it is, right? Mm -hmm. So you would expect that the Perseus would be a Corvette or smaller. You know, I actually think it belongs with a Hammerhead. It is literally a heavy gunship. Sorry, that's you, exactly uh, what it is. Um, so it's ironically you say that because I actually do think. Um, they are in the same class, the mm -hmm. the Hammerhead and the Perseus. Um, we often see yes. the Hammerhead com c compared to the Polaris, but I I just think if you man, I really wish I had that image in there that actually showed them side by side. But the Hammerhead is weirdly a little larger than the Perseus, but it's that much smaller than than the mm. than the Polaris. It's it's closer to the Perseus in size. 
essentially. Yes. I, I remember Absolutely. way back when they first came out, because they came out, from memory, they came out very close yep. together. Yep. And I think it was even before we knew the size of them, really. Mm. And we were saying, and I can remember we were saying, these two ships complement each other really well. Yep. The, the mm. Hammerhead would take out the fighters and the Pers- and the Polaris would take out. Yeah. One, um, one the, punches the, up. The big, one punches down. Yeah, one punches yeah. down. Yes. Um, and that was one of the key things we think. I actually think these days that the Polaris Hammerhead really work well together for that same reason. Um, and the Perseus and the Polaris is kind of mm. further out, outfield, but that's just a, a different uh, mm-hmm. thing. Mm. That's, yeah. a, that's a show. That's a discussion for another show. <laughs> well, but yeah, X, what you say about the Polaris being offensive support, uh, absolutely. Um, it almost, without wanting to muddy the waters further, it fits the role of a destroyer. If you just think of World War II destroyers, they were generally escorts. They were, you know, big enough ships that you could send them to trouble spots, and on their own, they were a pretty effective deterrent. But against capital ships, destroyers had the ability to close, fire off their torpedoes, and then get the hell out of there before they suffered return fire. Um, uh, but most of our, uh, the guns on a destroyer were designed to kill stuff of equal size or smaller. Mm. You know, they had a lot of very small armaments, um, and that actually, if you were going to go and give it bigger guns, by all the definitions of naval warfare, you would then call it something else. So you're you're exactly right that it's, you know, and, and Algrid's going to come on to this in just a second with mm. the components, but it's designed to detect, mm. which is what destroyers were. They were sent out to screen ahead of the fleet, find the enemy fleet, get that message back, allow the big ships to close, and knock the snot out of each other. And if they were able to close in, in you know, poor light conditions or poor visibility conditions and mm. get a couple of torpedoes off first, then perfect. You know, and destroyer captains going back to World War II, and I don't want to, to, to ring the bell but for, for the Royal Navy too much, but this is well documented, is that they would fearlessly come up against battleships and cruisers. Mm. That, yeah, there's a little bit of a... Of a is Circle Jack um, <laughs> <laughs> banned by YouTube? Because if it is, oops, sorry. Um, but yes, you know they they would fearlessly go in, throw a bunch of, of um, torpedoes in, and then and get away mm. before yeah. the really big guns found them and turned them into to you yeah, know well, tin foil sandwiches. Um, I, know I, just... the, I know there are stories from World War Two as well um, mm-hmm. of Australian destroyers fighting the Japanese and doing the same thing, and American yes, destroyers absolutely. doing the same thing. And time and time absolutely. again, you hear it. Execute, mm-hmm. sorry, you were going to say. I've forgotten. Uh, it was something about the Javelin. Um, would that be was, yes. would that be the closest <laughs> ship to the Polaris, then, in, in terms of if you were going up? Because I know you can go down and you can go to a Retaliator and you can go to other bombers, but if you're going up, is that... Because you mentioned the Destroyer, and that's what a Javelin is, and I kind of look at that like this has a size or so under the torpedoes of the Javelin, the only torpedoes in the game that are bigger than the Polaris is the Javelin, yeah? So are they yeah. somewhat similar? Uh, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to risk a lot of um, knockback from this and then the comments, but bear with me, guys. Mm. I would say at the moment, yes. And the mm. reason for this is at the moment we're viewing everything from the fighter's perspective yeah. because mm. those are the ships that we have our hands on most. So we are seeing this, if you think back to Midway or you think back to Pearl Harbor, we are seeing this from the one person in a plane, two people in a plane fighting. And we're looking at the Polaris going, you know, this is what this sort of thing is. We are going to have to completely rethink how we think about everything when the capital ships come in. Because they are, you know, so you have the destroyer. That's how the UEE Navy uses it. Okay, in much the way that we'll use the Polaris, because we're not going to have our hands on most of these capital ships. Mm. They're going to be exceptionally rare if we get them at all. Um, you know, we're not going to be going in making daring uh, uh, attacks at the likely destruction of our javelin if we get hold of one. People are going to keep hold of that because it's going to be worth its own weight in gold. Mm. So the Polaris for us is going to operate like a destroyer, regardless of what name they give it. Uh, and I, I was going to ask, I, I, I like the idea of the way you were describing the Polaris as a destroyer because it, it 
it does fit that historic bill. Mm -hmm. And that raises the question, how would you write the Star Citizen Destroyer in terms of ships? And I'm thinking it's a heavy cruiser or it's a battleship. It's, it's, um, in terms of size comparison, in terms of the gun sizes and... Yeah, it, I mean, it's... interestingly, they could be used... They could be used in much the same way, right? So mm. I don't want to get too heavy in the history, but destroyers actually came around because of torpedo boats. Mm. Because they were initially called torpedo boat destroyers, as in we destroy torpedo boats. So because the javelin is a direct match against to... exactly. Sorry, go on. Yeah, yeah, no, that, that's it. You know, and the javelin is effectively a Polaris destroyer in that its its job is to stop the Polaris bringing those torpedoes in range of a Bengal or in range of you know a Pegasus. And and that's where the term destroyer came from. They were called torpedo boat destroyers. So the Polaris is a torpedo boat, and its only purpose was to get in and fire the torps. Except this thing's covered in secondary turrets. So, my my, yeah. bra my brain's gone to a weird spot where the javelin. <laughs> just hear me out. the the yeah. The javelin is physically a spear, and I remember when they were advertising the Polaris, they called it the tip of the spear. So, it, funnily, ironically, they do have. Um, mm -hmm. more than just links in mm. times of that. Um, Agra, do you want to give us the components before we get too far away? Because yep. I've got a feeling we're going to forget them completely <laughs> at some point <laughs> if right. we don't so, get under them. Yeah. So the interesting thing is you look at the radar and the Polaris has capital radar, which yep. fits in with the idea oh. of being able to hunt things. Yep. Rem remember the radar, bring that back up because that's what I was going to talk about yep. before that I forgot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. And the Perseus comes in with a medium radar, smaller yep. ship, you know, etc. They both have two medium computers. Mm. They both have fuel intakes. The, Pol the Polaris has three large intakes. Okay. Perseus has two that we don't know the size of yet. Here's mm. the really interesting one that got me. The, per the Polaris has two medium fuel tanks, just regular hydrogen fuel type stuff. The Perseus, two large. Wait, medium versus but large? Than... Yeah. Mm -hmm. The Polaris has two medium. The Perseus has two large. Like that tells me it's for atm atmosphere. It's got to go right. in atmosphere more. Yeah, okay. Right, yeah, keep going. The quantum drive for both is large. The jump drive for both is large. The quantum fuel for both is large. And so, to me, they both have the same... They have the same range. So if one is, a local, if one is designed for local defense, they're both designed for local defense. That, that's where my mind kind of goes. You know, they're both system ships, not really inter-system ships is kind what, of What about the cargo my thinking. for both? That's where I think there might be. Is there a difference? The cargo in... for both is, yeah, significant difference in cargo. Yeah. Polaris, mm -hmm. 216. And Badger's mentioned mm -hmm. this before. Mm -hmm. 216 mm -hmm. SC of cargo versus 50 on the Perseus. Mm -hmm. so, and I so... think most of that cargo place on the per Polaris is really that cargo space to support the fighters and... Agreed. And that's that's what I was going to say. You also might have some, like, if you're not taking a lot of fighters, you could just have fuel in the cargo bay. So, mm. yeah. Um, again, it leads to what Badge has also said about the versatility of it. Um, so, yeah, that's, that is really interesting. But they are, like, strikingly similar, aren't they? Um, yeah. Old versus new, as we've said. Um, and I think it really does come down to the, the armaments of the guns that really set them apart. Um, and I think that you're, you're looking more... You guys correct me if I'm wrong here, but like, uh, kind of like, um, like one's the armored ship and one's the shield ship. You know what I mean? Like that's mm. so, so. They're the the two differences: the weapons and yeah. and the armor. So yeah. So, and the, and if we go if we go to systems power mm. plant, the Polaris comes out with a capital power plant. Yep. Which you, which and considering it's got less, I suppose, big guns that use power, you you kind of think, okay, mm. Polaris has two large power plants. So one clap, one capital power plant versus two large, but the coolers are exactly the same. Two large coolers, mm. the shield generators are exactly the same. Two large shield generators, and I think the big difference there is the Polaris has not only the shield but also heavy armor, uh, mm. as I understand it. So uh, I, and then so you go into the weapons and those so, categories. So, so I, I, I don't know, and I'll kind of refer to both of you here. Why would it need the bigger capital power plant? The first thing that come to mind is that radar that you mentioned. I remember way back in the day, um, they had a lot of people comparing the Carrick and the Polaris, like because the 
the Polaris has quite a large scanner on it um, that can mm -hmm. reach far out. But I personally think it's so it can sit back and lie and wait and see what the fighters are doing and also see things that it wants to strike. That's why it needs that really fast scanner. But you correct me if you think if you think I'm wrong there. Yeah. Where uh, so no, the interesting thing, sorry, very quickly, um, and I'm frantically scanning the Q and A that they released. Um, because as we've said before, the brochure is inaccurate. But mm. the and brochure so says lies in that matter, but well, there is that. The brochure says it has three. So the brochure says it has three large shield generators, front, center, and rear. Right. Um, and that, which would and also the... account for, you know, when you think it's a third longer than the passes, that would make sense. Yep. The the increased power plant would also make sense, but. One yep. of the things that often gets overlooked is we, we think size is everything, right? And it's like, mm -hmm. well, I'll just get bigger and that will be better. Actually, one of the key, set, the key design theories within a warship is redundancy. Yes. Mm. So rather than have one power plant that gives me over my power needs so I have spare power, I would rather have two power plants that equal it. Mm -hmm. So if I lose one, I can choose what systems to keep on I can choose which systems important. to get rid of exactly, so and just, you can you can continue to to do something. So just a reminder uh, for everyone mm -hmm. that's watching, um, they've roughly stated a component times three is Jeff is roughly equal to the one above it. So um, kind of like you said, ironically, and I, I think it kind of goes back to the shields. How you're saying there are three shields for the Polaris and only two for the Perseus. That lines up with their power requirements. So. Mm. Because the ship is a third shorter in the uh, of the Perseus, it only needs two large instead of the capital. So I do think roughly for their size, they are they are comparable. But yes, as you said, um, the redundancy is there as well. Sorry, I just mm -hmm. wanted and, to add that. And you've also, but the other thing you've also got on there with the Perseus is that heavy armor versus, and I, I'm, I can't remember what the, the armor is on the, the Polaris, but the Perseus certainly is that heavily armored ship. So it's kind of acts like a, a third shield, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Does it actually state anything uh, about the armor in the Matrix of Lies, or not? Not at all. Um, no, nothing no. in the Matrix of Lies. You need to go back to the brochures um, and the bro the armor for the Polaris, right under where it says it has three large shield gens. It says light. Yep, I figured. That um, would be. And then yeah, it, it then says um, you know for the Perseus, it's documented that it's exceptionally heavy yeah. because it hails from a time when. Shields couldn't be put on anything less than capital ships, so it needed the. I like, I like that, by the way. This is the this mm -hmm. is the it's weird not thing. Just heavy. Mm -hmm. It's not just heavy armor; it's exceptionally heavy armor. <laughs> so yeah. I now ask the question: Which one do you think will actually be faster? Because one's bigger but lighter, where where one's heavier but exceptionally heavier. So um, yeah, I'd expect I'd ex still kind of expect the Polaris to be a bit faster, just from yes what was said there, but. We'll have to kind of wait and see. Because mm. the other thing is the hangar is just kind of an empty room if there's nothing in it too. So it's not mm. really as big as it appears. Um, yeah. So we'll see. Well, the interesting thing is, is you know, the um, Polaris carries four main thrusters, whereas the, mm. interestingly, as far as it goes at the Matrix of Lies, the Perseus has two main and two VTOL thrusters. Mm. Which again ties in with it being able to go to planet side and, yeah. and yes. be used in atmosphere. Yeah, like, yeah. you um, know, and that would you know that would indicate VTOLs. You, you you generally tend to get the same amount of power from it, but you know when you're in gameplay where you're trying to make delineations between what each things mean, it would make sense for VTOLs to to maybe not have as much power. But I'll defer to you in that. Your, no, no, that's I, I, much I, more your wheelhouse. I, I think you're right because the to me the Polaris would more likely be to send the fighters where the Perseus can't do that, so it's just got to go itself. So it's it's really logical from what you just said, but um, yeah. And the advantage of having the, the that fighter or, or the extra crew on the P Polaris, a that's you know deck crew or other stuff, it does give you. I imagine there's even a content a small contingent of Marines on on the Polaris as opposed to. Mm -hmm. The Perseus is just your your flight crew, the crew that you need well, to run the ship. Um, you could technically, I'm trying to think, you could, uh, no, Legionnaire is the same size as a freak. No, so it couldn't, you know, I'm trying to think, there's no dropship that you can put in there at the moment into the Polaris hour grid. I'm just trying to think of what, the, the, the smallest one's the Legionnaire now, and the Legionnaire won't fit, I don't think. Vanguard? 
Um, Vanguard's actually a medium pad as well, so I don't think that can fit either. So you, you, you could, you could, I guess you could jerry rig a whole bunch into a, a Pisces, like you know. Um, mm -hmm. But but um, M MPVU, MPVUP. Yes. Yeah. Um, but yeah, th that's a pinch situation. There's not really a combat situation there. So, yeah. but yeah, you, you could do it if you needed to. You're not wrong. Um, and also technically, um, you know, you could technically have a rover and, and, and the Polaris can land, it can do that stuff. Um, mm. but like I said, I, I think a lot of the time it's going to be in orbit and it's going to send stuff down because well, just like a Kraken or an Idris, you're not going to send them down willy nilly, are you? Uh, so yeah. <laughs> um, the, the interesting thing go ahead. one of the other things that comes out from the design of, of the ships as well is the from CIG's perspective as opposed to outside of law the Polaris is that Corvette ship that was being designed to replace the original design of the Idris mm -hmm. um, the Idris was originally supposed to be a Corvette it was supposed to carry two fighters you know you and old man Cotton mm. as they were working on it They'd used the wrong metrics, so the, um, the, the, the Idris had to grow, and it grew to a point, I think it can take three fighters now, maybe maybe still two, and it's certainly got the MPV you hang it underneath. Mm -hmm. All right, well, So that's... this is the, the Polaris of that new ship, and it's, it's only got one fighter, though, so it's significantly smaller than the, even the original Corvette design. So that's but... a really good segue, Agrid, uh, for what I wanted to talk about next. But have you finished? Sorry, I did interrupt. Yep. Uh, so long no, story I'm, short, I'm long story short, the first question I want to ask is obviously the glare. Some these are some really glaring ones for me that I, I kind of want you guys to look at, and it does take us a little bit outside um, the comparison area. But I think it's worthwhile for viewers um, if they're looking at either the Polaris or the Perseus. So for me, <laughs> we, we talked about um, how we're talking about the Hammerhead and we'll, and the other ships around the same size. You know, you can even chuck the Nautilus in there if you want, but that's you know that's more defensive like the Perseus. Uh, where the hammerhead is more offensive like uh, the Polaris. But I think the really obvious thing is is what you just brought up, Algrid, is it's the only Corvette. Um, and yeah. so, so for me, is is there going to be other Corvettes? And one thing that Algrid and I have talked about a few times, it, uh, the glaring omission is there's just not enough animal ships in the game. There's just no capital animal ships at all. Um, and so when I look at the kind of, you know, that triangle of design where you've got uh, support, um, offense, defense type of thing, you know, that rock, paper, scissors approach. If you kind of look at what we've got in the, the Perseus, it's clearly defensive. Um, you've clearly got an offensive Polaris. So what, you know, could we have a defensive Corvette? And, um, you know, would that be more popular to some people? You know, like, d did they chuck the hangar on the, uh, the Polaris to make it offensive support? Because, like, if you look at it, when you do it like that, you only really kind of need a support mm. defense and you don't need another Corvette after that. So so there's at least room for one more is what I'm trying to say. But with this being yep. offensive, just support, I just, I think it kind of restricts that you don't need three. Uh, but what do you boys think? I don't know. I, I guess I'll throw it out to you guys. What, uh, what would you like to see as in another Corvette? And, uh, yeah, I'll leave it at that. Um, uh, I'll come in first. Oh, go for it. Yeah, just... no, 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 by all means, you go first because I, I think I might take us off on a tangent in the end of this one. So, right. please. I was going to, well, mine's probably a tangent as well for that matter. <laughs> um, when, you, when I think of that, I think of the Constellation and the uh, Corsair. Yep. So, the, the Constellation had the fighter. Yep. And when they designed the Corsair, deliberately doesn't have a fighter. And mm. so, you've got the same type of idea that you're thinking of. Mm. One has got the fight, the, the small little snub ship and the vehicle. The other one's just got the vehicle, but heavier guns. Yeah. I also remember that, that design theory that was posted around ages ago, uh, or theory that was postulated that there was a, the idea that there'd be a, a, a ship and the you know the the, the so called the, the so called rumored story was that you know a UAE guy was saying hey it wasn't awesome to have a ship that didn't have those horrible space jockeys mm. uh, we could just get on with business of flying the ship and doing our job um, and that type of ship would fit with mm. uh, that type of pattern that you're thinking of as well so 
Uh, yeah, only, I'd like to the only the reason I, is the spice of life. So the only reason I kind of question that is it kind of just basically would then make um, whatever this Polaris Corvette competitor is literally just an upscaled scaled Perseus. And, and Badgers, I'll yep. throw this back to you then. Is there room there for just an upscaled Perseus that's at the Polaris's size? Or, or what do you think they would add to it? Do you think they would just add a... Could you add a hanger to the Perseus and it's just another form of Polaris and that's the other ship? Like, uh, what do you think they would add to it? At, at the Polaris's scale, potentially not. Um, at the Idris scale, mm -hmm. yes. Um, and the reason I say this is, you know, we've got this very clear... Um, dynamic between battleships, mm. battle cruisers, cruisers, destroyers, um, because it's laid down in World War II. It, it's gone on and on and on. Um, it's what people are familiar with. Um, we're not getting that as a gameplay loop because mm. they've said, you know, look, the javelin is going to be the biggest thing that we will own in a game. Um, you might get your hands on the other stuff, but you don't own it. So when it goes, you're not going to be able to claim it back through insurance and all that sort of stuff. Yep. Um, so they almost need to replicate that at a smaller size. So we need our battleship, which is a javelin or equivalent. We need our battle cruisers. We need our. So you have the same interaction, and maybe that's where the Polaris is coming in. Maybe that's what it's doing. Is it is our destroyer scale vessel, and the Idris is our frigate scale vessel, mm -hmm. and okay. so on and so forth. Um, you know, because looking at the, the, the Idris just very quickly, um, frigates, by definition, are anti-submarine warfare escort, car uh, escort ships. Mm. Now, the submarines in Star Citizen that can't be detected, that carry very powerful torpedoes that are designed to get in, attack, and get out without being detected, we're talking Retaliator and Eclipse. And the best way to deal with those things, as modern frigates will tell us, is don't be anywhere near it. Kill it with an aircraft. In this example, it's the fighters that the Idris carries. Kill the Eclipse before it gets anywhere near the fleet, and that torpedo is not a problem. Mm. Um, and and that's maybe that's it. So you know, what do we lack here? Well, mm. it all basically hinges on what do you think the javelin is to us? Is it a battleship? Is it a battle cruiser? Is it just a cruiser? Um, you know, because something with those whopping great turrets at a larger scale would certainly sit on the battleship description to me. So mm. adding the 10 years of development, the number of times they've rewritten the law, um, <laughs> taking World War II ship names and then putting them ship names a thousand years in the future, and me being a completely lay person, I think at some point they're just going to redo all the names um to whatever they like they can use the same names yes. like they can use the the names from world war ii but even things like you said the perseus and idris are the same fleet of mm -hmm. uh, uh, type would you say you said frigate and that yeah. that that's a corvette well that obviously needs a reworking doesn't it you know so yes. i i think they're going to kind of wait till they're all out and then maybe rebrand yeah. some of them um you know Absolutely. um and, and and we've talked about this a few times um and i, I i'm thinking of one particular person that's hanging out on discord so you know who i'm talking about who rages when we say certain ships are capital or not capital because of what they've called them and what they've not called them and i think that what i'm trying to say is i think they're really mm. in flux at the moment and i i, I don't think mm -hmm. anything's really set in stone so um i'd expect a an overhaul uh before the uh, before release absolutely and you know cig if you want a hand with that i am available all it's going to cost you is a is um you know a quick look around a your purse, yes. studio he just wants a purse yes that's all he needs and mm. the purse, yes <laughs> mm. um it was interesting when you were talking about the the version of the Polaris that doesn't have a hangar. Mm -hmm. I think you go back to that first picture we had where you had them top down. The version of a Perseus without a hangar, or Polaris without a hangar, is a Perseus. Not essentially true because, like, but I think... I think because the... of the size, you know, when you take, mm. when, when you take the hangar off, it's basically the same size ship. Yes, you've got different yeah. armaments, but... Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's different armaments, yeah. Um, but, but uh, you know, like, if you if you just added the hangar or to remove the hangar depending on which ship they are very similar in stats mm. it's just that the armaments essentially change after that so what i'm saying yeah. is if they do tr go to make another corvette you know based on rock paper scissors mentality when you do that mm. it, it literally is just a dolled up perseus with a hangar or if it doesn't have a hangar what does it gain mm. instead of the hangar and that's why i'm like i'm sitting here thinking yes. at the moment 
like what do you add to a combat ship and that's why i'm asking do you just is it just way more gun than the polaris like does it become um you know like does it does it become it so te- like does it get the med bed as an example you know w- w- what do you give it um well, actually polaris has got a med bed too so what you get what i'm trying to say what what do you add yeah. to it that 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 just differentiates it from the polaris because at the moment i just can't see it right other than it's well, a perseus with a hanger but if you take the hanger out of the Perseus, what crew do you save? So how much crew do you need? How much extra crew are added because it's got the hanger well, well, and the... Well, you're also upsizing it. Does it go to four guns? Did they go from size 7s to size 9s? Like, like, there's little things like that along the way, obviously, as well. Yep. But, mm-hmm. like, is it just more guns? Like, so my, my whole point being is, is what is the gameplay difference between the Perseus and the Polaris? And if it's literally just, I can shoot at bigger ships, that's a bit boring. And it's, and it's just like mm. one of the things you'll notice that when we look at every ship that you look at, they all seem to have a twist to them. A thing that kind of makes them unique, that, that sets them apart. Mm. Now, there are exceptions to that where you go, say, something like the whole series. It, just, it literally does mm-hmm. just get bigger and bigger, right? But when it comes to everything that we've seen up in, in, in the, you know, look at the Kraken versus the Idris. They both are support. But one is support, um, more, you know, it's got more of a fleet carrier vibe where the other one's more mm-hmm. combat support, you know? So they, they, they both still have their niche area. And I just don't see yeah. the niche area if they were, other than the manufacturer change, right? Um, so so I, that's why I kind of posed it to to badges because i thought there might yeah. be something there like where um you know it's got the torpedo maybe it's missiles you know ma- maybe it becomes you know um it's got bigger guns but it's also you know really good at fighters so its weakness is ships in the middle like constellation or or, or drake that can deal with the missiles and they can dodge the big guns but their weakness is is you know the medium size mm-hmm. that could be a thing too i i was just theorizing but um it's a bit hard to do i know so yeah i'll leave it at I mean- that one of the things that both of these ships lack is the ability to keep themselves in the fight. So repair is potentially something, you know, the ability yeah. to do that sort of stuff. Um, because once these take damage, they are entirely reliant on a station or another vessel to support them. That doesn't um, right there. You know, so imagine if you took the repair bay for a Carrick and you chucked it into a ship the size of the Polaris, but it's got the armaments mm-hmm. of a Perseus. So that that's a differentiating factor. So it can repair its own armor as it's in the fight. Yeah, that that'd be sick. Or or repairing its own components more. It doesn't have to go back. That's what I was talking about. Mm-hmm. You, you're getting where I'm going now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. Um, the last one I, I think I'll throw out here before we we kind of wrap up this, and this has tangented a little bit off um into other things. But what do you guys think about them holding off certain ships, like what we just discussed, till after release? So they'll wait to kind of the games rolling, and then you know like we talked about that you kind of get the the rock paper scissors it, say this is the scissors do you think that we might after release we might see the the paper and the rock yeah um right. it's going to be a natural evolution when we see it is is kind of up for grabs but yep. you know we, we've already kind of saw it seen it a little bit with the carrick and the odyssey mm. You know, the the, yeah. the the large exploration ship i don't think anyone would was ever going to argue that the carrick wasn't filling that for, for that function yeah but now you know it's got a it's got a competitor on the market and something that's clearly designed to do something similar from a completely different angle yeah. um you know so I, I i will still maintain i believe that the odyssey is best suited as more the industry mining route um you know and the carrick is jump points and all that sort of stuff yeah. Um, and I so, don't yeah. think you'll find any argument from any of the runners. Yeah, on that one. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, so yes, I, I think that's certainly the, the, the way to go is to start adding in, you know, if I want a small savage ship, why am I limited to Drake? Yeah. Why can't I have something else that does some things slightly different and just give us variation, as you say? Yeah. So I think I think the the top end of the stack is obviously, you know, what I'm trying to say is like the fighter stack at the bottom is really filled out to the point I think we almost feel like we've got too many fighters at this point. But as you immediately go up, you even get to say something like the Redeemer. 
Um, mm-hmm. There are a few other things around there, but they're more generalist ships because, you know, but the Redeemer is the first one that kind of really focuses it. I think you could say you've got, you know, the Retaliator there as well and maybe the Eclipse, but that mm. for me falls back. But the more you go up is what I'm trying to get at. It's a very steep pyramid. There is, you know, less and less as you go up and um, I, I'm hoping in given time we'll see that fill out more, but... It's a tricky one because there also seems to be like they're moving away from these bigger number of ships and they're they're scaling them down because of um, you know shards and server meshing and stuff like that. I feel I think they feel that their numbers aren't going to be as good as they originally uh, foresaw, unless you guys think mm-hmm. different. Mm. But and, and and just going to what you're talking about inside the ships, like that plethora of fighters and small ships, and as you go up, the need because you're able to put more components on what roles in those ships that they get less and less and so by that argument the the say the Idris which is the larger ship we can own will only be the one type because it can do so much it's got six modular bays and other things you can change so they won't need that the, the view is you wouldn't need to have different I don't want to correct you Agri but you mean you mean Javelin but I got yes, what you meant yes I do mean the Javelin I did <laughs> say good. Idris I, the good. second you said it I did realise as soon it, as yep. you said modularity I went yep I, that's what he meant but he just said the wrong name it's okay keep going <laughs> Yep. Hey, I'm old, you know, so yeah. It's fine. No, I was, that, that was pretty much it. Just that it's got so much modularity that you only need the one. You don't need mm. an RSI version and a, and a Origin version yeah. version. Um, but as you go down the next layer, you can have two or three. And Yeah. There's going to be definitely a lot more co- uh, cross-pollination like Badger's kind of hinted at as we mm. go down. And um, at the moment, I think they are still trying to just get one on every base, if that makes sense. And then... Um, you know, as time goes on, like uh, Badger's alluded to, you know, we've got a Vulture, then you'd see a direct, you might see yep. a Crusader c- uh, comparison or uh, another manufacturer, it doesn't matter. But yeah, as you go up, I'd, I'd assume that there is a lot less cross-pollination. I'm even kind of surprised we do have some cross-pollination in things already, like, say, the Kraken mm. and the Idris. Mm-hmm. They are a lot closer than I thought they would have been. But also, when you get up to that size... They're so such big ships that other ships are all automatically going into them that automatically gives them that support factor. So, yeah. Is there anything mm. um, you guys want to round up on or any questions you would like people to let you know in the comments what they think? I mean, as always, you know, my military slant will only be, you know, I'm just giving that knowledge. It's up to you guys to decide what sounds fun from that and what you think shouldn't touch the game with a barge pole um so let me know you know what is it about military history that we can draw on what is it you know either from stuff that we said or other stuff that just doesn't belong in a game um you know i'm just here to give you guys the information and and you decide for yourselves which sounds most fun so Agrid, um, I... and just hope that i get picked up by cig, CIG along the way <laughs> so, so Agrid, i just heard from the Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm just translating what he said there. He just said the Persis is not fun. That's what I just heard, right? Is, is that what you heard? I, I, I yeah. definitely heard that. Pretty, pretty the Persis sure. is yeah. not fun. Yeah. Yeah. Not fun. Yeah. So you heard it here from uh, Badgers. <laughs> Badgers said the Perseus is not fun. Yeah. We'll just clarify that. What, what, what would That's you what lo- you get for working with those workers, Badgers. <laughs> That's what you get for working with those workers. They're bad news for you. I, I, I titled that video, and he gets thrown into the bus. Anyway, uh, <laughs> what, what, what's... Uh, <laughs> What what's what what's what uh, comments would you like to hear from people below our grid? Um what do you think? Do you think that um there is a credence for this the ideas? Which I suppose which one? Which one is mm. better? Do they do, do they balance out? I'm I'm kind of getting the opinion that I think they kind of do balance out. They've got different roles, but mm. there's actually a, a lot of cross pollination between these two ships. In terms of what they do and the roles they see, um, I was I always viewed the the Perseus as being the that river, the river troll boat mm. um, or river gunboat from Vietnam era from one of the videos. And yet, when I look at the components, I start to say it, it it's more than that. So, what do you guys think? Um, I'd like to hear because I think there's two parts to it, right? And um, in the comments, mm. I I think. On paper or on the Matrix of Lies, they look so similar, it's not funny that you can literally swap arm, armaments and then take off the hanger and put it on the other. That'd be the same. But I also think they're not in production yet, so I think mm. that that'll change, right? And if it changes, this is clearly an unfair comparison. Right now, it's fair. 
because it's on paper. But I would hope, in a way, I don't want them to be so similar. Right? Yeah. Uh, when, when they come out, we want them to be really different, yeah. don't we? Yeah. So it com comes back to what I was saying before about I want everything to have its own little twist, its own little niche and uniqueness um and so i don't know what do you guys think in the comments are they too similar to you at the moment would you like to see them be different um do you think they will be different or do you think they will be like what they are now so yeah that's what i'd like to and, hear. and even how would you make them different yes especially what i was trying to say about the um an upscaled perseus like how like how badges kind of added the repair thing at the end you know um that's what I was trying to get out of them, but obviously I didn't articulate that properly. What would you give an armoured ship that's the size of the Polaris to make it unique that's, you know, because on paper they're very similar, as I said, so yeah. All right, then, um, uh, if you like this type of video, like this video, please. Um, don't forget to subscribe um, and ring the notification bell. And if you want to go the extra mile on Patreon, uh, we couldn't do this content without our patrons. Um, it basically allows us to buy gear. We are looking at buying a camera for badges real soon. I am having my own camera issues, but it's, we're making do, uh, we'll get there. We're, we're hoping to, we're hoping to raise badges from the voice in the void, unless he's deliberately yeah. being that because he's a, he's a, the voice of the workers. Mm -hmm. you know, so I'm as long as I get one know. of those black stripes over my eyes thing, because then I can't be identified. That he's, a... he's going to oh, be like that and, uh, um, that guy that comes back as just the eyes. You know, and the, what was that D uh, Dark Angel with Jessica Alba? He'll just be the eyes. <laughs> and uh, you know, That's screw what's angle. been said before. Perseus supporters assemble. Tell these two how awesome the Perseus is, because they're not listening to me. What, what did so, he say? I didn't hear anything. Agrid, what, yeah. what happened to Badges? See, just see what I mean? He, see what I put up with the he said that he's the eye, he, He'll have those eyes and he's just going to keep those secrets. That's, mm. that's I it. got up early for this. Can you believe? <sighs> no, no, I didn't. <laughs> but we're, up, we're staying up late. So that balances yeah, out. Yeah, that's right. We're staying whop, up late. Whop. Yeah. <laughs> All right, that, with that, he's been Agrid. He's been Badges. I've been Execute. And he's been Execute. And we'll catch you in the next one. <laughs>